So three different ways, point slope, slope intercept, and standard form. So let's put away our devices, take out our earbuds, put away our phones, please, and thank you. Um, we're going to cover substitution method, and then you'll have plenty of time to start on homework. So the easiest one to start off with is point slope. So in order to write an equation in point slope form, point slope is y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. So we have a point, and this is my x1 and my y1, and we have the slope. So we're just gonna substitute it in. So it would be y minus y1, which is negative three, equals m eight x minus three. So what's the one thing that we need to do? Change the, uh, right, so this is your final equation. All right, so this here, this would be your final equation. This is point slope. So this is point slope. So now let's write it in slope intercept. So for slope intercept, we're gonna take this equation, which is y plus three. Hold on, let me write. So now let's do slope intercept. Slope intercept form you have to solve it for y. So take this equation, solve it for y. So that means you have to distribute the eight and subtract three. And you'll be in slope intercept form. Can we put away our phones, please? Thank you so much, I appreciate that. So when you distribute the eight, you get y plus three equals eight x minus 24. Subtract three from both sides. So your final equation for slope intercept will be y equals eight x minus 27. So this is your slope intercept right here. That's slope intercept. And then our last format is standard form. So for standard form, I'm gonna go ahead. Let's take our slope intercept form, which is, so standard form. So standard form has three rules. First rule is no fractions or decimals. Second rule, A has to be positive. Um, and the third rule is that A and B can't both be zero, but we don't really focus on that rule that much. So what we're gonna do is take the equation Y equals eight X minus 27. For standard form, X and Y have to be together. So I'm gonna subtract this eight X, which is going to become a negative eight X plus y equals negative 27. But remember, I said a, which is the number in front of x, that's the only number that has to be positive. So if this was positive, I would be finished. But you cannot leave this first number negative. We have to make it positive. So what am I gonna multiply the entire equation by? Negative. Not, well, we don't even have to go that high, just negative one. 
So what I want you to do is take this equation and multiply it by negative 1, the entire equation. And that's going to give you a positive 8x minus y equals positive 27. So in standard form, go ahead and tell me a, b, and c. a, b, c. What's the number in front of x? Positive 8. What's the number in front of y? Negative 1. Negative 1. And then my constant? 27. And that is standard form. So this is standard form. This is my A, B, and C. All right, go to page 107. We're going to talk about the substitution method today. Solving a system using the substitution method. So this is still a recap of Algebra 1. You have learned this method. Um, substitution method, though, only works if you have a variable that is solved for y. So, at least one of the equations needs to be solved for y. Now, I do realize that there's not a lot of space in your book. So, if you want to write these examples on a separate sheet, that's fine if you're not able to find the space. Okay, so let's look at example one. When you're using the substitution method, because we're talking about there's three different ways to solve a system. There's graphing to figure out where they intersect, there's substitution, and then there's elimination, okay? We're gonna talk about elimination on Monday. But for substitution, you wanna focus on finding an equation that has a one either a one or negative one in front of the variable. So notice how this first equation has an eight and a negative three. This would not be a good choice for, to, to solve. The second equation has a one and a two. So this is the best option. So for step number one, where it says solve one equation for one of the variables, what I'm going to do is take the second equation and solve it for x. So how would I solve that equation for x? Subtract 2y. Subtract 2y. And you can look on where it says example 1, it's, it says subtract 2y from each side. So your equation will be x equals negative 2y minus 12. So that's what you should have on that line. Okay, so step number 2 is substitute the expression for x. All right, so what I'm going to do is take this expression right here and put it in for x, which would be right here. So I like to rewrite it with parentheses. So that would be 8 parentheses minus 3y equals negative 1. And that's why your book has the parentheses. So inside of that parentheses, you're going to put in this negative 2y minus 12. All right, so now let's go ahead and distribute. So now you're going to distribute the 8. So when you distribute the 8, you get negative 16y. What's 8 times negative 12? Negative 96 minus 3y equals negative 1. Now you're going to combine your like terms, which would be the negative 16 and the negative 3. These two are like terms because they both have a y. 
So that would be negative 19y minus 96 equals negative 1. Go ahead and try to solve that equation from there. Finish solving that out for y. So you would add the 96 and then divide by negative 19. So when we add the 96, we get negative 19y equals positive 95. Now you're going to divide both sides by negative 19. So what is 95 divided by negative 19? Negative 5. Who got negative 5 for your y value? I'm going to pause there. Any questions about how we got that? OK. So step three is to solve for x. So using one of the original equations, we're going to solve for x. So I'm going to use this equation here. Now, when you're doing it in your homework, though, you could also use this equation. Actually, I think I would prefer to use this one. Let's use this one because this one is already solved for x. So off to the side, let's just use this one. x equals negative 2 y minus 12. And we know we figured out that y is negative 5. So all you have to do is type this in your calculator. Take negative 2 times negative 5 minus 12. What did you get? So x equals negative 2. Good job. So you solve the solution, your system. We always write it as an ordered pair. x comes first, y comes second. And this would be your solution. Negative 2, negative 5. All right, let's look at example 2. Actually, before we do example 2, I want you to take a moment and do the check at the very top of the page. Let's do that check. So let's look at, at the very top of page 108. So page 108, we have a check. And it says negative 5x plus y equals negative 3. 3x minus 8y equals 24. So we need to solve this system. The first thing we need to figure out is what equation am I going to solve for? Where is the one? The top, right? And which one? So right here, does everyone see how this, because this is important. Um, this is your best option, would be to take this equation, because this has a one in front. I want you to solve this equation for y. So solve for y. So if you take that equation and you solve it for y, how would you solve it for y? So you would have y equals 5x minus 3. Now you can do a substitution. So we can take this 5x minus 3 and replace the y with it. So that would be 3x. minus 8 and now you're just dropping in that 5x minus 3 so go ahead take a moment and solve that for x
All right, so when you distribute the negative 8, that would be 3x. What's negative 8 times 5x? Negative 40. And then what's negative 8 times negative 3? Okay. So now you're going to combine your like terms, which would be your 3x minus 40x. What is 3 minus 40? 37. Negative 37. And now you're going to subtract 24 from both sides. So that's going to give you negative 37x equals 0. So x equals 0 divided by negative 37. And what is 0 divided by any number? 0. zero. So x equals 0. So now you need to find y. And the easiest way would be to use this equation here. y equals 5 times 0 minus 3. Yeah. So your solution is 0, negative 3. All right, last example. Let's look at example two. And again, for this one, this one is already solved for an, a variable, so we don't have to rearrange anything. Okay, so this one is already solved, so we can just substitute immediately. We already have our variable equal in something, so go ahead and substitute that in. So in your book, it already set it up for you. So you had negative 5x plus 2.5. And then on that blank, you're going to write our substitution, which in this example is 2x minus 11. So go ahead, write that 2x minus 11. Now distribute. Distribute the 2.5. So 2.5 times 2 is 5. And what's 2.5 times negative 11? Negative 27.5. Okay. So this is a special case. Because what is happening here when you try to combine your like terms? Notice how these two, they cancel out. Because negative 5x plus 5x is equal to 0. So what you're left with is just a statement. And that statement says negative 27.5 is equal to negative 15. But that is actually false. These numbers are not equal. So what that means is that we have at the very bottom, this system has no solution. OK, it has no solution. These two lines are parallel. That's why your variable canceled out, is because these are two parallel lines. And remember, parallel lines don't intersect, so they have no solution. Homework 12. You really can't do much of homework 12 because we're, we're, we can, you can only do one, two, and three today. But I want to remind you, because a couple of you tried to turn in homework past the deadline, so we're not packing up. You're going to look like you're working. You're going to look like you're working. Okay. The deadline to submit homeworks 8 through 14 is Tuesday, September 20th. Don't know. I, today's the 9th, so that's like a week and a half away, I think. Um, so go ahead and use this time to work on any of your assignments. You should have 8, 9, 10, and 11 finish at this point. And if you don't, this is the time to get that done and get healthy. Enjoy your weekend.